Today the church remembers Joseph of Arimathea and we read John chapter 19 verses 38 to 42. Joseph was a person mentioned only once in the Gospels, although all four Gospels do mention his name. We know very little about him, despite the legends that arose about him later. We know he was a member of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, who condemned Jesus to death. So was Nicodemus, who also appears in this passage. We know he believed in Jesus, although up to now he'd kept it secret. We can work out that he had courage since he went to Pilate, the Roman governor, to ask for permission to bury Jesus' body. Usually the bodies of crucified victims were thrown out onto the city refuse heap and left for the crows and scavenging dogs. So this was an unusual request. We think Joseph must have been wealthy, not only as a member of the Sanhedrin and therefore an influential person, but it seems likely that the tomb was his own, was meant for him. That's it, that's all we really know. But his role, although brief, was very significant. He placed Jesus' body in a tomb and sealed it with a stone, meaning that it was secure and safe from robbers or scavengers. When the rumours of resurrection began, it would have been much easier to say the disciples stole the body and hid it if it had been cast out onto Gehenna, the city refuse heap outside the gates. Matthew even recounts that Pilate set a guard outside the tomb to prevent these rumours. When the women arrive on the Sunday morning and found the tomb open and empty, it's a much more clear-cut case for resurrection. There were soldiers guarding it. The stone door was very large and heavy. The body has disappeared without trace. Joseph of Arimathea may have only gathered his courage enough after seeing Jesus die to make this act of fairly public commitment, but he did a great service. It was an act of devotion, giving Jesus dignity even after such a terrible death, and it became a launch pad for the beginning of the church as the reports of the empty tomb circulated. We don't know what he did with the rest of his life. The legend that Joseph came to England with the Holy Grail and brought it to Glastonbury dates back only as far as the 12th or even 13th century. Nor do we know what happened to Nicodemus later, that other secret disciple on the Sanhedrin. Perhaps one day in eternity we may find out, or Perhaps not. As Aslan in the Narnia stories would say, that is their story, not mine. And the more important question is, how will I develop my story?